بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسول كريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. ما شاء الله. What a nice way to spend your holidays, man. Alhamdulillah. It is. Huh? Alhamdulillah. Ma sha Allah. We have a lot of uh, kids here, uh, young men. Ma sha Allah. And uh, they come to the masjid and they're making. Are you guys making a tikaf? Yes. Yeah. You staying here tonight? No, Big. No. Uh, Tonight or last night you stayed here? Yeah. No, no, tonight. They're staying tonight. Yeah, it's a big sleepover in the house of Allah. Slumber party in the house of Allah. MashaAllah. Allah accept. Alhamdulillah. It's not a slumber party with your mates. It's a itikaf, inshallah. You're supposed to pray and do good things and daras and talk about good things, inshallah. Every uh, Saturday I have this daras. We don't have ghost stories in Islam. Uh, we are at something more serious. Huh? This, is, this book is called Horrors of the Grave. Ahwal uh, al-Qubur. It's even it's more scarier than ghost stories. But I'm reading the nice part. I'm reading the nice part of the... Uh, the uh, no, no, you won't be able to handle it. We will already read through all of that. This is the nice part of the scary part. Inshallah. So you will... Uh, inshallah, you will you will see. Bismillah. The first narration, Umar radiallahu anhu said, O oh Messenger of Allah, said to the Prophet, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that sometimes you frighten us and we get scared about the darkness of the grave and about the tightness because sometimes the darkness of the grave and it, the, how it's constrained, how it's tight it is. Rasulullah said, you'll be resurrected on the way you died. Meaning, people like you, like Umar radiallahu they need not worry because you are people, they're Sahaba, they're friends of the Prophet, they were worried what's going to happen to them. He said, you'll die, the way you live is the way you'll die, the way you'll die, as Umar radiallahu said himself, the way you live is the way you die. If you live a good life, see, as Muslims, when you come into this world, it's not to live a good life. It's to die, as one sheikh said, it's to die a good death. It's to die a good death. But the way you die is the way you, the way you live is the way you'll die. Your intentions, they all catch up. And the way you die, then you'll be, and we'll read about that in the grave. We read a whole chapter on it, how Allah makes for the believers, for the mu'minin, the grave, a garden, from the gardens of paradise. And we'll read some these narrations about this so that'll make us appreciate. Wanna have lighting. You know, everybody wants to put RGB, what is it? You know, the LED lights under the table in their gaming station. They want to put uh, LED lights, you wanna put all the colours, um, and you got the remote for it. I did it as well, you know. I got caught up in it. I said, All right, eBay, I can order the lights. But we wanna put lights in our qabr. We want our qabr to be spacious. We want to have a nice view of Jannah, as the Hadith mentioned, we read it before. I'm just reminding some of the, the previous narrations where the Hadith, where the Prophet said the windows open in Jannah uh, into paradise in the grave. And you can see the place that you'll be going to Jannah. You get a, like a 8K surround sound, uh, the best of the best view into Jannah. Because you can't go into Jannah yet until you go through the Day of Judgment and you get accounting on the Day of Judgment. Um, you, you have to, uh, but you'll see your place, where you're going, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the vin- window for you so you can see. The next narration is mentioned that Isa alayhi salam, the Prophet Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, that he was standing at the grave with some of his hawariyun, his um, disciples, right? And the, he's a, Jesus, the Prophet, uh, we don't obviously uh, worship Jesus, he's, he's a Prophet of Allah. He was born without a father. His birth was a miracle, Right? And we don't, we don't, uh, we don't pray to him. We only pray to Allah. We only pray to Allah. Yeah, on the way that the Prophet Muhammad showed us, we only pray to one Allah. So, say, Isa alayhi salam was one of the prophets before Rasulullah. He was a prophet before our prophet, the final prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So he was standing with his disciples. Isa was standing grave, and they were looking in the grave. And when they were putting somebody into the grave, and then they mentioned amongst, they started talking about the. The loneliness in the grave because you're by yourself is there isn't it you're getting, not getting buried in like two people with you together the next guy's in his own grave the what guy on the other side is in his own grave you're in your own grave so he said but it's loneliness it's tightness it's darkness they're just talking so isa alayhi salam said that you were you were in something more uh you were in something much more constrained than this meaning you're in the belly of your uh, uh the, the belly of your Tummy of your mother. This was more constrained. Meaning, don't be afraid of this. We should be worried about it, but don't be so scared that this is it's only a bad thing. You already experienced something that was more constrained than the grave. Another narration mentioned 
that when a, um, Imam Ahmad narrated, uh, there was a person that used to clean the masjid. It was a man, he cleaned the masjid in this narration. And he was buried in the night. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, informed him. Rasul, the Prophet, the Messenger of Allah, he went to his grave. And uh, they mentioned about, someone said about the darkness of the grave. And the, uh, and, but he said, oh, sorry, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself mentioned. So I'm reading in Arabic and I'm translating English at the same time. So sometimes I miss a few things. That in he, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned about its people, the people in the grave and the darkness of the grave. And but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it bright by my dua, by, by pra my prayers or my dua, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. And he came to the grave and he made dua there. Another narration is mentioned that, um, that the, Prof um, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed by a freshly dug grave. And he had Abu Bakr and Umar with him, his companions. He said, whose grave is this? And he said, this is uh, Umm Mihjan. She was a lady. She used, to, she used to clean the mosque. Sometimes in the mosque, you know, like we hear in the mosque. And I don't know why people do this, but they sh tissue sort of like, you know, like sometimes we sp spend our time collecting tissues, you know. So it's a house of Allah, right? So it's not like any building. Yeah, it might be made from the same bricks that in your house. It might use the same paint that's your house. But this area here has been designated as a house of Allah. Inshallah till the day of judgment. You can't, generally, you cannot convert a mosque into anything else. You can't just sell off the mosque, right? It's till the day of judgment, it's a mosque, inshallah. Allah protect. So in the masjid, there are rules. Because if you go to somebody important's house, if you go to somebody else's house, like a famous person's house, or you, let's say you go to Buckingham Palace. A hey, old lady, she's 95, you go to meet her. You stand there properly with respect, you know, because it's, it's, it's important because in, in our mind, she's important. What she does is important, supposedly. And you have respect. Allah, the creator of the heavens, this place is designated the house of Allah. Then how much more in our heart should we the respect? The one who created the queen and the presidents and prime ministers and all the prophets, he created all of them. So when we enter his house, there's a, uh, uh, the brothers probably went through the etiquettes, how to enter the masjid, how we leave the masjid, how we talk in the masjid. Because Allah's watching us. Many people, they miss out on Islam because the way they treat the masjid. Like they think it's their lounge room. Like there's many things that are halal in the mosque. We can talk to each other about good things. You know, we pray, we read Quran. And alhamdulillah, extra facilities are built for all the other things. So sometimes people, when they come into the masjid, so they used to leave their things. So she used to clean. So she died. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was very... Um, um, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was... Why didn't you inform me? Why didn't you tell me? This special person who nobody paid attention to. Sometimes people in this world, they're not, people don't pay attention to them. When they're in the gathering, nobody notices them. But in the heavens, all the angels know them. In the world, nobody knows them. In the world, nobody knows them. Uh, they're not on Instagram. They're not on, you know, they're not on anything. Uh, they're, not on, they're not on any social media. But they're famous in, the, in Jannah, they're famous. In the heavens, you know, the angels all know them by, by the name, so and so. He's, they're famous there. And they're famous on the Day of Judgment because of what they do to please Allah. They will do charity. They don't make a video of another person holding a camera so you can do charity. So we can tell other people, mashallah, I'm doing charity. They do charity, nobody sees. They do good actions, nobody sees. That's what Islam teaches us to do good deeds secretly. Like a, you know, like a thief. Um... They, a thief doesn't make an announcement, get a megaphone. Hey, everybody, I'm going to rob, I'm going to do such a wrong thing. Nobody knows. Uh, he secretly breaks into, not, this is not a prescription. Huh? This is just to what uh, uh, burglars do. I'm not giving you tips on how to become a burglar. Yeah? It's haram. It's forbidden in Islam. Allah is displeased with it. But a, a, um, uh, more than that, pious people, good people, drink with your right hand. Yeah. The... The, it's something I don't know, I have a bad habit. I, 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 if I see it, I have to mention it, remind them. So this is a Prophet Sallallahu reminded me, someone drank or ate with their right, left hand. Anyway, um, so more than that, person who does good deeds, because we're not doing good deeds for people. We're not doing good deeds for our parents. We're not, we don't want any name and fame from anybody. We don't want recognition. 
The best deeds are the one done secretly. The, uh, Allah sees you, isn't it? Allah sees you 24 hours no matter where you are. And if He sees you and you're doing it for Him, He's pleased with you. And that's a good deed that is, it's in your record. The Prophet ﷺ said, uh, pray. What's the hadith? Sallu uh, nasuniya. That's pray. Uh, when the people are, uh, pray when the people are asleep. It's part of a hadith. Tadkhulu jannah bi salam. You'll enter jannah in peace. So pray. Uh, pray when people are asleep. Nobody knows. Just you and Allah. Uh, that you find a spot. In Australia, we're lucky. Especially in Doncaster. There's nothing here, man. It's like empty compared to overseas. Overseas, it's like Sunday morning he is dead. You can find a million quiet places to do good deeds. Nobody would know. In Pakistan, they have to go like from Pakistan. So Pakistan, they have to go somewhere. It's so crowded. It's 200 million. You know, the traffic jams are there like hours. Yeah, big, like I was in a traffic jam. I, I'm sure it was an eight-hour traffic jam in, uh, in Bangladesh once. It was like such a long, it was such a long traffic jam. It was unbelievable. But the day of Eid, nobody was there in Dhaka. Uh, Day of Eid is like ghost town. Uh, I was in Egypt in traffic, and the uh, the taxi driver uh, we were stuck in traffic in Cairo. It was terrible traffic, and he said, "Sabr, what is sabr? Sabr on Jamil or sabr Tawil? You know, sabr is uh, beautiful, but sabr is you get rewarded for being patient, but sabr is very long because uh, we were there stuck for two hours in traffic. But anyway, so this lady." Nobody paid attention to her. She used to come in the mosque and nobody's. She come and pick up all the rubbish and everything. She didn't make any noise. And she was the Sahaba didn't think the people didn't think she was very important. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, "If only you told me." Like they prayed her janaz in the night. They didn't want to wake up Rasulullah ﷺ. In the night she passed away. They buried, washed the body, and all that sort of thing they did for her. Then they buried her. He said, "If only you told me." Then Rasulullah ﷺ he went. And he said the Sahaba didn't want to wake Rasulullah ﷺ. He went. He goes, that my dua for you, my prayer for you, my salat on you, salat janazah, is to know whom that he makes the grave, fills of the grave with nur. They were lucky people. The Prophet prayed their janazah. The Prophet made dua by name for them. Another narration mentioned that uh, one of the uh, Abu Qadaba, he saw that um, in his, he saw a dead person in his dream. May Allah, and the dead person said to him, sometimes the dead people come into the dreams of people. Right? And he said that uh, may, may Allah reward the people of the dunya uh, with goodness and give salam to all the living people. Who is giving the salam? The dead person is giving salam to all of us. For what? Uh, he's saying because they, they, uh, their du'as come to us like mountains of light. The du'as that the living people make they come to us like uh, the, the dua, they, their du'as, they pray, Ya Allah, forgive all the people in Faulkner Cemetery. Ya Allah, forgive them, have mercy upon them. As an example, because there's a, there's a cemetery in Faulkner. Anybody been there? You guys been there? It's a, for, it's a cemetery, there's a section for Muslims. So all Muslims are buried in there. So you make du'a, like for example, Allah, forgive all the Muslims in the Faulkner Cemetery. May Allah have mercy upon them, fill their graves with nur. That du'a is accepted and taken for them and presented to them. In other narrations mention that um, uh, one of the, uh, the narrators said, because one of our friends, he said, we saw a brother, our brother in a dream, after his death. He said, do our du'as reach... Uh, uh, because I asked him, do our du'as reach you? Our prayers reach you? He said, yes, it, they come, they, uh, like it flutters. Your dua, the prayer that you make, it, uh, it flutters like a butterfly or like a bird. And it goes, and it comes in a sh shape of a light. And then we, we dress ourselves with them. They're clothes, like gifts. Now, how this is something hard to get our head around. A clothes made out of light. Uh, it's stitched from light. I mean, how it, something that's beyond our imagination. But we can try to picture it. But it comes and it uh, it uh, and we wear it. The gifts that are given to us because of the prayers of those who are alive. In another narration mentioned that one of the um, narrators said, "I saw Rabi'a al adawi If anybody wants to know, especially the Arab, many Arab brothers here, Ahwal al Qubur, Ahwal Ahli al Nushur, 
Al-Imam Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali rahmali, compiled this 600 years ago from many many hadith. He said this is only summarized. There's actually more narration than this. But anyway, uh, he, uh, Rabiat al adawiyah she's a great pious lady uh, of, this, of the Muslim, from the, the second generation of Muslims. So she said, I saw in my dream, and I saw her in my dream. And I used to make a lot of dua for her. She said to me, O Bashar bin Ghalib, this is the person, your gifts come to us on plates, trays of nur. Um, and covered in, Muhammad bin Manadil Harir, covered in silk, it's wrapped up in silk, um, silk uh, uh, handkerchiefs. I said, how, how's that? Like, what are you talking about? Like, what do you mean? What gifts do we send to the dead people? He said, because of your dua for the believers, the living people, the living believers who make dua, and uh, when you make dua for the dead, they're accepted, and it's presented on trays wrapped up in silk as a gift to the ones who passed away. And then another narration mentioned, whenever a person makes dua for the uh, dead, an angel comes in the grave. Oh, ya sahib al qabr al gharib, ya sahib al qabr al ya sahib al qabr al gharib, hadiyatu min akhin shafiqin alik. Because oh, um, oh, the person, the strange um, stranger, uh, in, the person in the grave, oh, the person of the grave, this is a gift that is from your friend, affectionate friend in the world. There's a, your friend, your mate in the world. He sent you, brought this, sent his gift to you. He made dua for you. Here's a gift uh, for you. Another narration mentioned that um, there was a plague. Do you know what a plague is? So this is when there's a contagious, like Corona, but worse than Corona. It's a contagious. Tata'un is like very, a lot of people die in it. Alhamdulillah, Corona, not so many people died. We were worried. At the beginning, we thought it was Ta'un is coming. Uh, this is, but Ta'un is like, the, you probably heard of the bubonic plague or black death. You probably studied history books. It's like one third of the world died in that hundreds of years ago. Anyway, so he goes, this man used to go to all the janazas, al, al, uh, Bishr Mansur. He used to go to all the janazas, the funeral prayers. And he used to stand, as he went to the grave, when he goes to the janaza, then he used to stand at the grave, make this dua. Anis Allah wahshatak wa rahimullah ghurbatak wa tajawaz an siyyatikum wa qabbal Allah hasan. This is his dua. Because Allah comfort you, keep you company in your loneliness, have mercy in your uh, uh, being being a stranger and remove your sins from you and accept your good deeds. He used to make this dua. And he didn't say anything more than that. One night, because he got busy with the family, he didn't go to the, the cemetery. And and I didn't make that dua. When I was asleep, a big crowd, crowd of people came to me. Uh, people can't get rid of people. you know. Even their dreams, they come to you to ask you uh, things. So they came, this group of people came in my dream and he said, uh, he goes, what brought you people? He goes, we are the people of the uh, Maqabir. We're the people of the grave, the cemetery. He goes, what do you want? He said, we got used to your gifts. Uh, we got used to your, all your, the gifts that you used to send. Um, and he said, what are you talking about? He goes, what, 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 what gifts are you talking about? What gifts was I uh, sending? And he said, that you used to make uh, dua. And then he said, after that, because I never left. I used to pass by the cemetery. Whenever I pass by, Every day as I used to pass by, I used to make dua. Um, and Sufyan ibn Uyayna, great muhaddis, a hadith scholar, expert on the sayings of the Prophet وسلم, he said that it is said that alamwatu ahwaju ila dua'i min alahiya ila ta'am. That the dead are more in need of dua, of prayers, than the living people need food. Another narration is mentioned that uh, um, the last one for the tonight. That some of the righteous people they saw. Who is this? Al-Abbas ibn Yaqub ibn Salih al-Abyari. He said, I heard my father say, some of the pious people, Salihin, they saw his father in a dream. And he goes, oh my dear son, you stop sending gifts to us. And he said, oh my father, what do you mean? Like, how does the, the living, how can we send gifts he says, if it wasn't for your gifts, if it wasn't for the gifts, we'll be destroyed. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Nas'alullah al-Afu al-Ghufran, we ask Allah to overlook our faults and to forgive. This is the why we should make for ourselves and those who passed away. So, mashallah, we're so happy to see you guys here. Uh, as a
Egyptian Nawarta Muna, uh, Nawarta Doncaster. Uh, you, uh? No, no, you, you have brought Nur to Doncaster. You understand? Like the people want Nur in the grave. Uh, I was in Egypt and they say, Wallahi Nawarta Muna. Like you brought Nur to. All right, come. <laughs> like we're not used to it in Australia. You brought Nur to us, you brought light to Egypt. You know, like Ahsan and Nas, and you're the best of people. Where are you from? Australia. Then Ahsan Nas, the best of the people. Then my friend, my friend was next. We're in internet cafe. There's like 15, 10. And then Ahsan Nas. And then next, next one to us, he's Lebanese. He's Lebanese. He said, "Where are you from?" He's Lebanon. He goes, Ahsan Nas, the best of people. What happened to Australia? With the Pakistanis, we we got replaced very quickly. So you are, you brought, you are the, you brought no Ahsan Nas. You're Ahsan Nas and. You brought Noor to Doncaster. It's so nice to see uh, the masjid alive with you guys, mashallah. Everyone happy? Yeah. Had a good dinner? Yeah. Mashallah. Allah accept, Allah accept all the parents and the brothers, mashallah, facilitating. And inshallah, uh, the more the merrier. And uh, you re uh, made my night, inshallah. Barakallah feekum. Subhanallah bihamdi. Subhanakallah bihamdi. Kan ashidu Allah ila anna astaghfiru wa tubi ilayk. Subhanallah rabbika rabbil izzati amma yusifun. Wassalamu ala al-mursalin. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen.